So what this video is, is going to be um, how to identify if a source is peer reviewed, because in the midst of doing a lot of research, you are you are like inundated with sources. And so you really need to pay close attention to some of the details to make sure that it's peer reviewed or not, because your research paper isn't um, is not the same caliber as ninth grade. We're going through this a lot of the same steps, but this is an act. This is an argument that you are developing based on research, as opposed to in ninth grade, many of your sources were commercial sources, and so you have to be familiar and capable of maneuvering through peer-reviewed academic sources, uh, because in college you're also going to be using academic sources like this. So. Like I said, this video is going to be about how to look at or identify if a source is peer reviewed or not. So taking a look at the, this slide, um, I don't know where to put this so it's not in the way. I'll put it right here. How's that? Is that fun? So the first thing you can do is you can use the databases to your advantage. So every time you go to a database, you can always uh, like narrow down your searches to actual database or excuse me peer-reviewed sources so most of the time you'll see something like advanced search here um, once you click that it's going to bring you to a page that looks um, almost exactly like that um, and then right here at the bottom you'll see that it says it's literally a button that you can click that says scholarly or peer-reviewed journal so if you click that and then everything else you search is only going to be a peer-reviewed source and so that's the first way that you can like really quick make sure that you're getting academic sort or peer-reviewed sources and if you're not using something that's hosted by EBSCO which Alt Health Watch, EBSCO Megafile, Academic Search Premier, um, all of those sources like most of the search engines that you're going to use for databases will have this opportunity for you to click peer review so like this is ProQuest if you want to search peer review sources on ProQuest that's a, it's right away on their first page like click scholarly journals and then click peer reviewed boom all done um, and just so it you can use the database to immediately start identifying peer reviewed sources um, another thing that you can do is you can actually um, use, like once you've found a source that you're interested in, you can examine the elements of the source before you actually start reading the article. So for example, if you um, are searching something that is using EBSCO or, or your search, it looks like this, like the first page here, you'll notice that the um, journal is highlighted and the journal is the source, meaning like where or not, it's not the article, but it's like, think of it as the magazine. That's the, that's the journal. It's a, it's, that's the academic word for magazine is journal, academic journal. And so the academic journal is going to be some a link that you can click on. And when you click on it, it's going to take you to a page like this, which says publication details for um, the Polish Journal of Environmental Studies or whatever you choose to click on, right? So then you kind of go through here, where they publish, where is this, blah, blah, blah. And then down here, it says peer reviewed, and that's yes. So that means anything that's ever published in the Polish Journal of Environmental Studies, that means anything and everything has been peer reviewed. There's nothing you're going to read out of that source that hasn't been reviewed by other academics academics of that field and so um, that's the that's another thing that you can do so if you don't know if you clicked peer-reviewed sources or scholarly sources then look at the journal itself and do some research there um, you can also do things like find like you can identify some other elements of the peer-reviewed source they will have you can look for what's called a DOI or the digital object identifier. Now, this is important because these articles are published kind of like, if they're on a database, they're multi, usually found in multiple different databases. So like Google Scholar, you can find it on, um, on Academic Search Premier. You could also find it um, on other databases that we don't even have access to. And the digital object identifier just makes sure that regardless of where you find it, this is, you know it's the, an authentic source. So this is going to be, if you've got the digital object identifier, that means that, that is, that's the 
you've identified that that is the actual source there. Um, typically, they are published in, with volume and issue numbers, um, and they, like I said on the previous video, they usually have many pages, um, typically over five or so. Um, and they'll typically I use um, month or season and year as their publication date. So they very rarely have days that they will list. So as opposed to like February 25th, 2019, they might say January, February 2019 or February 2019 or even just winter 2019. So they won't have a day typically. And so here I've got a screenshot of two different sources to help you identify one of these is academic and the other is not. Um, and so I'm looking for, let's see if a DOI, an academic source is going to have a DOI. I see the DOI is listed here, so that already tips me off that this is probably an academic or peer-reviewed source. This does not have a DOI. A, a DOI. Um, so this probably means this one is not uh, peer-reviewed. Now, other things that I can look for, volume and issue number. If it has a volume and issue number, typically it's an academic or peer-reviewed source. So this one does have a volume and issue number, but so does this one. And so, okay, maybe that's not a very good clue as to whether or not it's a peer-reviewed source. I can also look for how many pages. So this is, oh, this is like 30 pages long. Let's take a look how many pages is this. Oh, it's like with one page. So, oh, it says two pages actually right here, and that one actually does say 30 pages right here. So this one's probably more likely to be um, peer-reviewed, this one probably not, because you can't get all of your research in one page. So, um, and then date with uh, month, se month or season and a year, as opposed to, oh, not that one. So this one is September 2005. That's more likely to be an academic source, a peer-reviewed source. This one actually has a full date, so this is probably less likely to be a peer-reviewed source. So just by that alone, I can see that, and I and I know for a fact, this is not peer-reviewed. And if you also have a question, you can also take a look online. Like I have, I actually looked College of uh, Chronicle for Higher Education, I looked online. Here it says, and this is a this is um, a um, a college library menu, and it says while many of these publications are newsletters or magazine, other publications in this box are academic journals that have not undergone peer review process. And then look right here. So even though this is a scholarly source, it has not gone undergone peer reviewed process. So while it's a good source, it does not meet the criteria of a peer reviewed source. Okay. Um, so that I just want to double. Now the um, a couple other things that you can do here. Oh, there's the button of present. Um, you can look at the source itself to identify. So, like, so you want you you pressed peer review on your search. You identified. Does it have a DOI? Does it have um, Does it have our uh, journal or our, our issue number, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. But you're still not quite sure. There's still some other elements that you can use. Okay, or another some other attributes that you can use. So. One thing that you can do is look at the article itself. Take a look at the author. So the author, in scholarly sources, they are associated with a research institution. Okay, so that typically is a college um, or a government institution. And so here's an example here where they have um, multiple authors associated with this source, um, and all of those authors are. Um, or not associated with, they're authors of the source, they are all associated with a university. So all this Jeffrey Burke, Erwin Waldman, and whoever is under this exit sign here, get off, get off of there, and Benjamin Lahey is, or Leahy, they are all associated with a research institution. They are, they have background in a college. So I already also know that this is probably a peer-reviewed source, just by looking at the article. Um, I can also take a look if I read a little bit of the article. If I if I um, if it seems like it's written for a specific 
audience because they use specialized language um, or language that is specific to people with this with background in this topic that is usually also a sign of a peer-reviewed source. Remember, a peer-reviewed source means that you are that this source is written for people with a background in this topic. And so if you read it and you're like, oof, this is this is this is a this, this clearly seems like it's written for someone specifically, probably someone with background in this topic. That is another identification, this is identification tool that this is a peer-reviewed source. Um, and then you can take a look at other elements of the article. Like if it's an, does it have an abstract? And an abstract is a summary of the article. And the abstract typically shows up right away. Um, read the abstract and see if you can get an understanding of the article. But if it has an abstract, usually a peer-reviewed source. Um, they also typically have graphics in their sources to convey the research that they've done. So something that looks like this, or sometimes their, their graphics are like an entire page or two or three pages long. So they will oftentimes have graphics. Um, they also have separated sections with headers. So here's a, an example of in an article that factors leading to changes of in social capital like that's a header of a section telling you that everything in this section is going to be about that so um that oftentimes conveys that this is a, an, a peer-reviewed source as well so um, this, like I said, these are all ways to identify if you have a peer-reviewed source or not. Remember, you want peer-reviewed sources. So uh, the, next, the next source is going to be talking about how to read peer-reviewed sources. Uh, why is my cursor missing? Uh, oh, where is it? There it is. Oh. 